All right, so in the getting up to speed section, we're going to be identifying and connecting with your ideal reader. And it's really important that we do this before you get too far along in the book process. You start thinking about how you're gonna connect with your reader, where they are, and you can start seeding your audience and letting them know that your book is coming and getting people excited about it. And that will make selling your book all easier when you get to the end. So be sure that you pay attention during this part and really have a clear definition of where your audience resides on the internet or in real life and how you are going to connect with them. We are going to scout out our competition and there are some tools that are freely available and I will show you how you can assess your competition and figure out how many books they're selling, how many ebooks they're selling and paperbacks. And we are going to do a complete competitive analysis so that you can find out where your book fits within the market and how you can either do what's working or go left and do something new and stand out from your competition. I also go over copyright in this section, which is US focused, but it goes over the general basics of copyright that apply in all countries. So if you are not in the US and uh, you're like, oh, this doesn't really apply to me, still take a listen because I think you will get some value out of that section as well. We also go over recommended tools that are for writers and publishers. So I go over exactly what I use when I'm doing my self-publishing process and also some other tools that are out there that I may not use but have used and can recommend. And then of course we talk about the true cost of self-publishing in terms of how to budget your, your whole project and how much it's going to cost you and what costs can you expect to incur throughout the year and how expensive is your first book versus your second book versus your third book and on and on and on. And then of course, we're going to talk about how to hire help. So how to hire experts, where to find freelancers, what types of things should you be asking them in order to get the most out of the freelancing experience and to make sure that when you hire people to work on your book with you, that they understand your vision. So we're going to go in that through all those details so that you can build a team of experts around you. So you don't have to be an expert graphic designer. If you're not, that's totally okay, but you can still get get the book cover that you're looking for. And then finally, I know it's kind of dry, but we're gonna talk about ISBNs and barcodes. And this is a question that comes up time and time again of should I use the free ISBN that this service is providing me or should I buy my own? And I go into my very specific recommendations. I give you a lot of background information so you can make your own decision based on what you think is best for you moving forward. That is the whole section in getting up to speed. We cover a lot. There's a lot of really good information in there and you'll be able to follow along with the printable PDF that's provided with the course. All right, in the ebook section, we are going to go over cover design tips. When you have an ebook, it's different than a paperback because your ebook cover is very, very small. And uh, the cover design ideas and tips that you might think about when you're thinking about a paperback book that you hold in your hand are very different when it comes to ebooks. And so we're gonna go over that in detail so that you can create an ebook that stands out from the competition. We're also gonna talk about all types of formats of ebooks and what type of file format belongs where. So if we're talk gonna talk about Kindle, direct publishing, iBooks, Smashwords, Kobo, all of those formats so that you can understand a little bit more about the actual file types that are required for ebooks. I will, I will also walk you through Scrivener, which is a tool, a publishing tool, and how to get an ebook out of Scrivener. You can get both Kindle books and iBooks, you know, the two different formats, Mobi and EPUB, out of Scrivener, and I walk you through both ways and how to do that. We also go through a free program, it's free for now, uh, called ReadZ, and uh, talk about some of the pros and cons of going through ReadZ, but if you don't want to purchase Scrivener and you want to try out ReadZ, this is a really good walkthrough for figuring out if that's the right fit for you. I also dive into Kindle Direct Publishing and show you what's behind the scenes so that when you get there to upload your, your Kindle book, there are no surprises and you can just fill in the blanks. And I also walk you through how to upload your ebook to Kobo, which is surprisingly really smooth. Like of all the ebook file uploads that I've done, Kobo, it really makes it easy. So I will walk you through that process as well. That covers it for ebooks and you will be all set once you're done with this section.
All right, in the paperback section, I'm going to discuss intro to printing on demand and what that means and what services do print on demand and where can you get the best bang for your buck when it comes to print on demand services for your paperback. We're also going to talk about interior formatting and layout, which is also known as typesetting. And I will go over all the basics of typesetting so that you can do it yourself and walk you through the process. It is definitely something that you can do yourself. It just requires a lot of time and attention to the little tiny details, and it can feel kind of tedious if you're not into that level of detail, then uh, definitely be sure to watch this to see if you want to hire this part out to an expert or if you want to try it yourself. Uh, we're going to go over setting a smart retail price for your book because there are a lot of things that self-published authors don't know and they might price their book wildly out of range for what is appropriate in the market, but then also you have to take into consideration resale value and how to get your book into a bookstore and what type of discount that they usually take. So if you want to make any money selling a book in a bookstore, you're going to have to price it correctly. And then finally, we're going to go over cover blurbs, which are also known as sort of reader testimonials. And these are the uh, praise words of praise and testimonial that go on your cover and on the back of your cover, the front cover, and in the interior first pages of your book that tell the reader when they're holding your book in their hands how wonderful this book is and I'm going to show you where to find these people in your genre what to send them and sort of what to expect when it comes to paying it forward as a writer in the field all right so that covers it for paperbacks after this section you will have a lot of work to do and decisions to make but you are going to feel really confident that your paperback is under control all right, this is launch it, baby. You were almost done, you're ready to go. In this section, we're gonna talk about how to reward your readers with juicy pre-orders. So how are you gonna incentivize your readers to pre-order your book? What, just, just the idea of getting the book before everybody else, I'm not sure is much of an incentive anymore. So what else can we do to get our readers excited about reading the book? Put your cre creative hats on because this is where you're gonna need to be creative. We're also going to talk about how to get into bookstores and what independent bookstores are looking for and the best ways to develop those relationships so that you can sell books in brick and mortar bookstores. That is one of the, that was my goal when I was self-publishing was to get my self-published book into bookstores and the way I did it will help you. And then the book launch party. We're going to talk about potential venues, things to do what the budget could be for a book launch party and how to make your book launch party a success. We'll also talk about how to assess if you should have a book launch party or not, because not all published self-published books should have a book launch party. And I will help you determine if your book launch party will be a success or a flop. And this comes from personal experience because I've had a successful book party and I've had a flop book party. So I have experience in both ways, but I can help you through so that yours is a success. So yay, you are ready to launch it. Let's get started.